Hello everyone, welcome to this week's stream summary. There's a few things to say, Mike's been busy, or possibly Pete. Uh, you might recognize this, it is underneath the existing tower of... Tower, tower of... there's a, a fake sky. Fake background. The existing car park of growing stuff. What are we growing in here? Oh, even more cotton seed. Oh, do you know what? We actually really, really need to improve. Uh, the amount of that stuff we're doing, excuse me while I actually get OBS visible, there we go. We, we are low on string and string is becoming important because all of these things involve wool. So Mike's been busy. Uh, I think Mike solely or at least largely solely has been doing all these tunnels. Uh, so there's a few tunnels you get to do and those are Mike's shulker boxes. Uh, down here there is now a water wheel. I don't know where Nat showed up. Someone added a water wheel. Does it hurt? No. There you go. Then. Nice. Um, to go with these we talked about these um, hydroelectric things quite, it's not even the hydroelectric things, these are the thermoelectric things. Um, I guess we're probably not, ooh, those wires hurt. We're not at the point, I think, where we can get hotter or colder stuff than these yet, so these are still outputting what they're going to be outputting at 0RF, because it doesn't tell you what they're outputting. That's fine. Um, this is outputting, I guess, 69RF, don't know if IF is the same. Um, this sign says that it's generating 64 RF per tick. It may be like, it may be right, it may be lying. I don't know. Here is, oh, I see. This is okay. The whole place is made of slabs now. This is as you have seen before. This place. What's this? More heads. Fair enough. Uh, and then over here, I haven't really done anything with bees this week because we started working on AE2. Um, so you remember last week I did a video on how to semi-automate AE2 for anything that needed a 5x5 five five recipe as long as I only needed nine things. I did that and then I spent the rest of the time figuring out why it was wrong. <laughs> so Mike's been doing this. Uh, let's see what Pete's been doing. Working on the tunnels. Okay, so Pete helped on the tunnels. Cool, cool, cool. He had a bit of an explosion in the quest reward room because he hadn't been here for a couple of weeks. Uh, got, got killed a lot. Mike has, oh, there's one thing, other thing that Mike's done, which he actually did in between streams, I believe. Let's go down here. I, I really like the way this looks, by the way. This is dense cable. So we had a look, if you go and have a watch of my video, um, either this week or, well, last week or the one before. So either the one at the end of the video or the one at the end of that video. Uh, you can uh, sneeze, two seconds. We've been tidying in preparation for potentially moving house, so it's very dusty. Um, the P2P networks will run networks. The P2P networks will run through these. They are there's nothing in them at all at the moment because we haven't finished. Um, but I will show you where they can. Look, this. I guess they go up through the roof actually because obviously they do connect there. So it's just a matter of finishing it, which is a problem because whoop is a big deal, and also they need something else. Now this is where AE is starting to be put, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. But this is still work. This is still in. To, uh, Actually, there should be something down there because otherwise nothing is doing the ore processing. We'll have a look at that. Over here, not that, the overworld seed bank, you'll notice that this has been dug away because Mike has produced this basement over here. And I'm guessing the goal is to join everything up at some point. This little basement with another fake uh, sky and land thing, which is very scary and kind of off-putting. Um, it's sort of a four-way hub. This will be going off in all four directions for constant underground transport. It would be really cool actually to have a minecart going through there. So this is in the house that no one uses, uh, where you can go for a wee or have a sit down. There's a something of some description laughing at me all the time, and I wish it would stop. You know this house. We've seen this house before. Tee -hee. Uh More trees outside it, which is nice to see. Please fly, thank you. Jump, there we go. Now, what were we just talking about? Uh, this stuff over here. I think maybe it would be nice to spend some time actually putting a roof on this place, but I don't spend any time in between streams, really. I did I did in between these streams because I wanted to fix the AE system, but we'll look at that. This has gone away, and we took this away quite a while ago. This used to be the automatic engineering table, which is now no longer necessary because we've replaced it with carpenters which is the thing that we wanted to automate really with AE2 in the first place. Um, but underground, overground, wombling day is all this stuff. 
Empty. Brilliant. Um, this is full of lapis, apparently. Didn't know we were doing lapis. Yeah, we are. So this is full of ore, or at least lapis ore. I guess that's fair. You know, it's a thing that we can get more of by pulverizing it. Or by what? Smelting it. It's interesting. Um, okay. <laughs> Mike. What have you done? That used to be the access hole, I suppose. We don't have one anymore. Let's go the long way around. I'm exploring, actually. I didn't know about this. So you and me together, we will learn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so in here is the, what? Why is it like this? <laughs> why, why is this happening? Ah, what, help. What has happened here? I think I just got a uh, elytrid. Well, okay. I don't like these being in the in the room. I think we should maintain because we want to be able to see these. And there's other stuff here, like this crusher, the Wesley crusher. Oh, that's making the cobblestone. I remember. And then this one is no, sorry, that's making the sand. That's making the cobblestone. So this is basically cut off from the world. Look, there's no cabling there. So I'm guessing that nothing is currently being exported into here because. Uh, Apart from anything that is finished, but nothing's being finished. Uh, actually, that kind of suggests that there's a problem because that lapis should be going somewhere, so it's already not working. Um, this will eventually be hooked up to the AE system, and therefore the travel time that we were struggling with from there to there, I'm not going to fix that floor, don't be silly, um, should be solved. So over here we've got the carpenters, which is where we have to run over to if we want to do anything that involves a carpenter that's given to us by the AE system, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, we want to make more carpenters and each one's going to have its own recipe in it which means it's going to have its own liquid in it so we want to be auto crafting the liquids as well as the stuff that the liquid makes if that makes sense so uh, for example one of the carpenter recipes is glass cable so we have a, a lot of glass cable in here let's uh, do craftable that's not a craftable thing okay uh, I, one thing actually I remember the logic so this logic processor is craftable. We have one stored. That's fine. I will show you what that's all about. So if you go down here, this interface here has the encoded pattern for a logic processor. And it's made of four circuit plates, one red alloy plate, two gold plates, and a basic control circuit, and a silicon plate. Because so if you have a look at the recipe of it, that is how you make it in a carpenter. You also need super glue. So the way that we would do this is this one, not that one. The way that we would do this, because the carpenter has a recipe and then you put the items in the inventory and it makes it. We've seen that last time at some point and we've seen it on stream. So I'm not gonna go through that again, but that means that if you want to auto craft something with a carpenter, you need a carpenter that has that recipe prepared. That means that you can just keep that carpenter full of whatever liquid it needs. So in this case, we'll just create a carpenter that has that recipe in it, keep it full of super glue, and we'll auto craft the super glue somehow. That's probably quite easy, because what you do is you keep um, a magma crucible, for example, next to the carpenter. You keep the magma crucible full of glue compound, and the glue compound can be auto crafted with just a couple of recipes. This might make it difficult, but we can probably use a machine to do that as well, right? So sandy glass is a crafting recipe. Crushing pulverizing that is a simple recipe. We probably only need one or two pulverizers in the whole system to create that. From there, you can mix it with rubber to make that, and from that, you can just constantly export. So the AE system has an export bus, and you can tell the export bus to craft the things that it needs to put into the thing. We'll probably have a look at that in the summary for the next episode, because I'm going to be doing that to keep us stocked on plates as well. So I won't go into that just yet, but that's how you would, call, uh, how you would automate this thing. Problem is, I haven't done that yet. That's too difficult. Uh, we need a bunch of carpenters, and the problem that I ran into for basically the entire of the last stream was trying to craft a carpenter, because when I did it in creative mode, I had all the the things that it needs to make it available to me infinitely. But it turns out that there's more to it than that. So what you would do is you would ask for a logic processor, and it will give you all the stuff that you then have to take over to the carpenter, fly all the way over, make some, which takes time, 
then you have to wait for them to get so that's a slow process so that's the sort of thing maybe you want to have a few in stock uh, and therefore auto craft auto craft it always and have you know a bunch of them available rather than waste waiting for the carpenter which is slow the problem that we came up with or that we came across i suppose i should say in the stream was the fact that the carpenter actually has an a copper tank as one of its um, dependencies and the copper tank is also an advanced crafting recipe so it's a five by five so we had to have two recipes in the same ME interface which I thought would be fine but it turns out it's not you can create as many carpenters as you want you know Bob's your uncle but you can't create two different things and if you have a look at the stream footage you'll see that the problem is that the strategy that I used last time has an import bus that will pull things in from this interface, put them into the system, and then the system will go, cool, right, the, the, the crafting has been completed. And that was the goal of the system, was to be able to put all the things that you want to craft into a chest, or that you need to craft an item into the chest. But then the thing here will say, it's still crafting and then you craft it and you take it away and this will think it's still crafting so we needed something that will go into the system and say it's done so that's what these are for this is the real item in here this is saying please export one and this is well that's a bad example this is saying please export one and this is the one that is exported that is a logic processor there's another one showing up because we asked it to keep that full if i take this out there are no more logic processors and it can't keep that full so this is constantly keeping one full which means there is one in the system, but it's on the edge of the system. Because if you ask this for them, you'll see there are not any. You have to craft them. I'll put this one back. The demonstration is done. So the problem was that the import bus would constantly import the first item, even though you asked for one of the other items, and you would never see it. It would never pull in the item that you had asked it to craft. But it would be constantly saying, I am crafting this item, because it would never have finished. So the import bus would be permanently on, but the crafting would never stop because it would always be pulling in this item which would then get put out sometimes maybe because of a glitch in the ticks it would pull out the second item but it's never going to get to the fifth or sixth item at all so i put my head together and i came up with this system now this is a complex system so brace yourselves this bit's the same it has the patterns in it i've added uh, a couple more and you ask it for a thing so for example, the, the, the copper tank is a bunch of stuff, right? So let's say we ask it for a copper tank. I'm gonna go upstairs because that's where it comes from. So the copper tank uses the advanced crafting table and it's gonna put the stuff in the chest. I'm gonna go copper tank. There is no copper tank in the system because the copper tank that's in the system is on the edge of the system in an inventory controlled by the AE system, but not visible to the AE system. So every time that inventory is empty, it's gonna try and fill it up again. I'm going to ask for one copper tank. And this is going to have all the stuff in it for making a copper tank. This is still saying I'm making a copper tank. In a minute, that's going to go away. I say in a minute, and we could probably sit here for a bit <laughs> waiting for that to disappear. But the point is, this will go away on its own over time. So I will create a copper tank. And I have one. So, right? I didn't put this in the thing. That's still there. That's mine now. I'm going to eat something. Brilliant. Um, the thing is about that is that the copper tank was a dependency of the carpenter. So now I can put this copper tank in here and ask for a carpenter. And this is actually useful because I'm on the server and we're going to use these carpenters. So I'm going to keep creating them. Can we create one though? <laughs> we need empowered Anori plates. That's a bother. Can't really demonstrate this without these being available, but that's a shame. Let me create some of these things and, and I'll, I'll come back to you so I can show you what's going on. Okay, we can make one, so I'm gonna. All this stuff eventually goes into making a carpenter. Notice how some of the dependencies are required. We need to craft a Restonia gear, we need to craft a gold gear, we need to craft a motor, we need to craft a lot of these things. The only thing that we actually need to craft in a 5x5 crafting table is the carpenter itself. So once this stuff is all ready, It'll arrive in here. Boom. So that's how you make a carpenter. You get all of this stuff, you go over here, you press carpenter please, and then you press plus, 
we made a carpenter. This is still waiting to make a carpenter, but in a minute, about the same amount of time as last time, it'll go. Promise. Trust. It's fine. Checks in the mail. See it. Now, this takes a long time because you can't just import things directly into the system because as we saw, it will constantly be importing that very first thing. We needed to introduce either a delay or we needed to specifically fetch the thing that we asked for, which is what we're doing. So at the back, there is an impulse item. Don't you know what? I'm just going to keep these. <laughs> like I, now that I've made a carpenter, we can probably automate impulse item dots. Even if we can't, you know, there's, I can make some more. But this is, this is taking too long. So I'm going to pull up these whilst we're, you know, looking right now. I'm going to make this that much quicker just by doing this. And I'm not going to do those ones because um, of reasons. Mostly because I've set those ones up. Uh, and these are the ones that I'm about to explain to you. So you'll see why I don't want to pull them up, at least not on camera. So we've made the impulse. So and this is this is now as fast as it can be. So from there, this is far away, I grant you. So that could be a lot closer. And maybe I will put it closer. But channels. So we have coming out of the ME controller, there is a dense smart cable using 10 channels. This is using 10 channels to do this. But this is creating nine, well, eight. It's technically eight. There's a limit of eight on here. Currently, there's seven. The limit on here is nine, but that's not the problem. <sighs> this here is connected to retrievers, and each retriever is configured to pull one thing in. It's a white list of that thing, and it has a redstone enabled of high. Attached to each one of those is one of these things we've seen before, which is a crafting card in a level emitter for the thing. When you are crafting the thing, this system will grab the specific thing that you've asked for out of here, it will trundle its way along there, and it will enter one of these drawers. Now I've used drawers because it doesn't need to be able to carry really more than one thing, maybe in the case of these item ducts, 12, but it's going to be less than a stack of the same thing, but each drawer has two things on it. So it could have been a two by a one by two drawer, but I forgot that they existed. Uh, I made these and I went, oh, well, I made them. So it's not important. These are cheap. So I've used them. I could have used any storage system. I did originally use chests, but what occurred to me is that I want to import the thing that arrives in these drawers back into the system once it has got there. So I'm selectively pulling out the thing that you're, we're crafting. It's making its way down here. It's going into the drawer and it's being imported into the system from a drawer controller. And that's why I use drawers, because now one channel can pull back into the system absolutely anything. Whereas if I was using chests, I could only do four items and I'd need another import bus. So this import bus is using a single channel from all of this. All of this is actually connected to that fat cable that goes through the top there. Sorry for spinning around so much. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. This is just connected to that just so that I've got uh, access to the system. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten eight items, which this is why that is limited to eight items, because this is limited to eight items, because these are limited to eight. And you can't connect one of these. Maybe you can. I haven't got one, so I'm not going to try. I'm not sure if you can connect them to this. I expect that you can't, because most small devices like this uh, can only be connected to eight channel cables. Notice there's one missing. That's because it would just be outputting a redstone signal all the time and I haven't got eight recipes yet, I've got seven. So, after all of that, in order to automatically cancel the crafting recipe once you've made the thing manually, we have to pull the thing from there all the way through to there, like surgically. We have to decide on the individual thing that we want to pull and we're gonna pull it, but it does work. You've seen that it goes away. Brilliant. It does tend to clog up the ME system a little bit. But the other thing we discovered, actually, which I hadn't realized, each crafting storage thingy needs to be a cuboid shape. <coughs> it's a multi-block structure. Each one of those is a single 
crafting CPU. Which means to say, each cuboid structure that you have can be one crafting job going on in parallel. However, you don't need the coprocessing unit. This here kind of looks like the CPU, but it's not the core processing unit, it's not the central processing unit, it's a coprocessing unit. I'll explain. With each multi block structure, which includes one block, you get one crafting recipe at a time and it uses one channel. So this cable here is using two of eight channels. One, two. If that makes sense. If we were to do this, this is still a multi block structure. This is now a single CPU with 2K storage, which means that one thing can craft a recipe that uses 2,000 items, but only one of them. So you can't craft more than one thing at once. If we do it this way, like it was, you can craft two things at once, up to a maximum of, nine, of 1,024 bytes. And each item in the recipe, like in the dependency chain, is, nine, is, is one byte. I could say nine, because 900 bytes is how much it costs to make a carpenter. Oh, it's even 436, so it must have been that something was necessary. 436 bytes to make a carpenter, we can make two at once. So it doesn't quite clog up the system, because by the time you've made the next thing, the other thing should have gone through the system and freed up one of those. And these are not too expensive to make, so we could put eight of these, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, stick them together with this cable, and there's your this is the crafting area. Yeah, those are the that there, which we're looking at, is the um the molecular assembly chambers where just normal three by three recipes are made, and this one here is the, the computing power that allows it to happen. So We've created a carpenter. Now here's the final thing. Actually, there is a little bit of a secret. <laughs> in order to get the items from the uh, interface into the chest as quickly as possible, because we I don't mind that this takes time, you know. I don't mind that it takes a minute or so, like a few seconds, for the crafting recipe to be automatically cancelled. That's fine. You you walk away. you you've done it. It'll clear itself. What I do mind is that if I had to request this recipe, because remember when I requested the recipe, this chest was full straight away, immediately, which is brilliant. Uh, the problem was, I, I, I didn't want that to take time. So I lost my train of thought completely there. The way these interfaces work is that they output all the things in the processing recipe into the inventory they're connected to. So if this was a, um, a furnace, for example, you could say you can make, in fact, I think we might even have a bronze recipe. If we don't, we will do soon. Um, we don't, okay. Uh, say you wanted to make bronze. You just put an induction furnace down and you say put this amount of tin and this amount of copper into that thing and it will output bronze. So when things go into the interface, as we've explained before, when things go into the interface via a hopper, via being pushed out by one of the thermal expansion machines, for example, they go into the system. That's it. That's how the that's what it's called an interface. You drop things into it and it gets sucked up into the system. It can also export things into an inventory that it's connected to. So if you ask it to make something, it's going to say, right, all those things, pff, I've been told to put things into an inventory. So that means that they are an inventory and they interact with an inventory. The other cool thing is that this is also an interface, this block that's stuck to the bottom. So let me demonstrate something for you. This interface passes channels through it. So this, hello, this terminal is connected to the system that's on the other side of that interface because the interface block passes channels through it. It can carry eight, as can anything really. Um, and, and anything that's made of a, any, anything faced like this can have usually anything on the wide side, but only an eight channel cable on this side, which is why we've got a glass cable here. But if we put this on here, 
you will notice that there is nothing in this system. That's because this system is a separate system from that system. We learned the other day that you don't need any special stuff for an AE system. You just need a wire and some power. So that cable there is allowing power to go from this smart cable connected to the main system into this cable here connected to a completely separate system which has on that end a storage bus and on this end a flat interface. The flat interface does not pass the channels through which is brilliant because it means that this cable here is not connected to the same network as that interface and therefore that cable which means this is a completely isolated network. All it has on it is an ME interface here and a storage bus there. And what does the storage bus do? It provides storage to the network. So anything that falls into this interface is stored in that network and the only storage in that network is the chest up there. Instantly it's travelled. So when you create a processing recipe to make a 5x5 thing, it stores it in this network and the only place for that to go is in that chest, which is just the quickest way of doing it and I'm really glad that it worked. Can we put this back there? We can. Perfect. Now, there is one more subtlety to this system, and I'll go and get some more Inori plates so that I can show you another carpenter being crafted. Be right back. Right, so here's the special thing. I've put more Inori plates in, but I haven't made this copper tank, which, as you mentioned, was something that I've been banging on about for quite a lot. There's a reason for that, because that caused me a second pain in my side. There's another attachment to this, which you might have noticed, which is a second storage bus, and it is configured to be low priority, and it's also configured to only allow these things to be stored in it. Why? Well, I'll show you. Let's take this off. If I ask for my carpenter now, something's going to happen. We're going to craft a copper tank. When we craft a copper tank, stuff goes in that chest. <laughs> Pointing. It's difficult. Stuff goes in that chest. The stuff that goes in that chest crafts a copper tank. But you have to do it yourself. When crafting that copper tank, the actual tank is going to go down that impulse item duct into the drawers, which we showed you before, and then poof, immediately into the system. Now the system has the item that it needs to craft the carpenter, so it's going to put all the other stuff to craft the carpenter and that uh, tank into that chest. Observe. Should be a bit quicker this time because I use the. It's still not that fast though, those impulse ones, which is why I should probably make it a bit closer. Boom. Copper tank. See? Copper tank. Now, we can still craft the copper tank and the carpenter, right? We can craft the carpenter. But we're supposed to have crafted a copper tank and we didn't. So now the copper tank that was in the network to keep the thing going is gone. So I'm going to craft that because uh, naughty. That was a demonstration. Uh, I need to do this. <laughs> there we go. This, this, this. I have the copper tank. So that was in there. Right? We didn't want it to be in there. But it's going to get put in there because that's how crafting works. Let's put this back. Please be still configured. It's not still configured. Priority minus one. Um, I'm going to reconfigure this. Just a sec. Okay, so there's six things in that because the seventh thing, which is the impulse item dose, I kind of don't care about. But also, you only need to put in there really the things that are going to be a problem. Um, I'm going to put the carpenter back. So this copper tank I've kept out of here because that was given to me by the system. But if I put this storage bus on the system, now this is a clever if I do say so myself. If there's a oh it's actually storing carpenters in there even though it's low priority. That's probably because other things are full. So it will eventually use this for but only for these things. So it's not going to spam the network with this other stuff. Um, but some things will end up in there. If I put this in here, gone. This is considered storage for the network and the network needs somewhere to get a copper tank from to satisfy the interface downstairs, right? To be in net. So as soon as the network, for, walk, walk this through with me. The retriever over there needs to, is being told that we're crafting a copper tank. So the copper tank comes out here. All the uh, 
All the um, items to make a copper tank are now in the chest upstairs. The copper tank makes its way down here and into whichever one of those it is. That immediately gets sucked back into the import bus, back into the system it came out of. The system that goes, oh, hey, I was waiting for a copper tank so that we could create a carpenter. Now it's crafting a carpenter. It's going to put that copper tank and every single thing else that is needed to create that carpenter into that chest, including the copper tank. But then the very same system is going to go, oh, I suppose we put in a copper tank in that interface. Oh, there's one in my storage. Yoink, it's gone back in. So you don't get an extra copper tank when you're making stuff. The crafting recipes stop themselves automatically and you can have as many carpenters as you like doing it that way. The only difficulty now is that we don't have all the other stuff. Right, now we need water cells, we need, I've actually got enough inori plates for once, you know, we need all these plates to be auto-crafted, we need bronze to be auto-crafted, we need snowballs possibly to be auto-crafted, glass, stone, right? All these things need to be a part of a huge tree of crafting operations that eventually allows to produce a carpenter. But now that I've got two spare carpenters, we can actually start doing that. One of them, very soon, is going to be used to make these. I'm going to take these out of here. Incidentally, one of these should be that as well, but I don't really want to do that. So let's poop. Uh, this one? Nope. This one? Nope. This one? Nope. Oh, what I haven't really covered is the, um, the first thing that Tristan made. Where did that go? Did I pick it up? I don't know. Um, when I got online after coming up with this ludicrous process, um, was the ME controller. And I think we might have covered this, but we're going to go through it again. The ME controller is actually made out of an ME controller part one and then a bunch of other stuff. And the ME controller part one is made of all that stuff, some of which probably needs auto crafting as well. So we've got a lot to do. This does work. So kind of the same as the copper tank thing, it's going to craft or it's going to put all the stuff that you need for the ME controller part one into the chest you're going to pull it all out and then the this fake thing which has actually just been put in an anvil it's just a glass cable that's been put in an anvil and renamed that's going to make its way down here having been requested by one of those um did we find the one that was and oh it's this one yeah you salvage that and that nice um oh we can test that as well No, see how it's pointing at it? So it has to be connected to an 8-channel cable, so there was no way of getting more than 8 of these on the same construction, which is fine because there's only 8. It's only feasible to get 8 in there. Um, it's going to craft that. That's going to go all the way down there, get sucked back into the system. It's going to go, oh, that's part of the crafting recipe. Put it in the chest and then pull it back out of the chest and put it in there. And it's all going to go round and round again. It's very complicated. It's ludicrous. And I love it because it works. <laughs> this is... This is what we do. So the other thing that I want to do, not necessarily right now, but there will be a certain amount of soon going on, is to dig through here. I thought we could sort of have a, a doorway sort of thing. This, by the way, is still full of stuff. Oh, there they are. Um, and put some carpenters in the room back there. So maybe, I'll show you what I mean. Um, if we have, a, I like having a sort of a three by three doorway. We could do this, maybe a 3 by 3 by 3 and then we can dig out another room there. Where did all your stuff go? Oh, that's because my uh, hammer actually sends, it teleports everything it digs out, which is brilliant. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, this does hurt you, actually, by the way, if you are in the wrong place when you press shift. <laughs> so be careful. Um, don't. That's all I've got. Um, yeah, people did stuff. Oh, there's one more thing I want to show you, actually. Let's have a, a little um, ta-da and hurrah up for the completed set of all of our logos of everyone that's playing. So well done to the... Uh, well done to the map makers. I've, sh I've shown you how they worked, I think, and it was very big. <laughs> Each of those is a, a chunk, I think, several chunks of blocks that the chaps have been putting together by hand. So well done to them. They have finished everything. That is all of us. Mike's playing, Pete's playing, Tristan's playing, Lawrence is playing, and I'm playing. And that's been me for this week. I hope you'll join me on Monday nights at 
half past seven. And I'm hoping that I will be able to continue this even after I've moved out into the middle of nowhere with terrible internet. Probably. And uh, I hope that you have enjoyed the episode. I hope that you'll be joining me for the next one when I will describe quite what other crazy shenanigans I've been up to. These are the P2P things, by the way. And I've coloured these in so they don't connect. And we have been using the same colours at the other end. And the reason we've been using the same colours at the other end is because then we can remember <laughs> which colour they connected to in the first place, so you don't have to remember that number of it. Anyway, thanks for watching. There's going to be more weird AE stuff in the stream, on the stream, and more to talk about at the end of the next stream when I do the summary video. And hopefully, people have done more things like putting chickens on Lawrence's tower and building a statue of a villager for some reason <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. And hopefully, we will eventually learn what's going on in. Yeah, oh, I can show you the. Um, here's the uh, stairs that I started building from. Oh, good. So I had to build these out of um, frame stair, uh, seared bricks and stuff, which doesn't look as good as I'd like it to, because the rest of the thing is made of basalt down here. This is supposed to be black, but I ran out of basalt. So, you know, but an effort was made. <laughs> it looks okay. It's just not brilliant because of all the weird textures and it's, it's wobbly. I don't like it too much. We'll get around to fixing that. Join me on stream. Join Lawrence on stream. Go and have a look at Lawrence's video. Go and have a look at my previous video, whichever way around they are. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching and goodbye.